Who have we been studying about? David. David. David was what? Somebody besides Anaya. <laughs> Matthias. King of uh, Israel. Israel. Okay. Now, David, in addition to being the king, he was a king. But David was also a poet. David was a a warrior. You know what that warrior is? It's a warrior. Somebody who fights. Good. You had warrior, not warrior. See, too many of us, instead of being warriors, we're just warriors. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, what's going to happen? And David was also a musician. He was. He was. He was good at music. He was really good at music. One of the, the instrument that David played the best was the harp. If you remember in one of the stories where King Saul was having some problems with his mind, and he was all irritated, he was agitated. And so they called, they said, we need to get somebody to calm him down. And guess who that somebody was? Gideon. Guess who that, can you guess? David, you're right. You're absolutely right. And David came in and he played the harp before King Saul. And the music just calmed him down. You ever, have you ever heard a harp? Yes, no. It's a pretty sound, isn't it? Yeah. It's a really soothing sound. And so David was also a musician, he was a poet. And we have in the Bible the book of Psalms. Now, those of you with Bibles, take your Bibles. Take your Bibles if you have it. And take it just like this. And then with your finger, go to about the middle of the Bible. Open it up. Uh, that didn't work so well for me. Open it up. Open it. <laughs> Open it up and tell me what book are you in? You see at the top here, it'll tell you what book you're in. What book are you in? Psalms. Who else has a Bible? What book are you in? Psalms. Psalms. What book are you in? You didn't quite open to the... Yeah, you're in. You're in Psalms. You see, right in the middle, right smack in the middle of your Bible is the book of Psalms. Now, Psalms are mostly real short. They're mostly real short chapters. But you know, there are more... Well, we call them chapters, but they're actually Psalms. And there are more Psalms, more chapters in the book of Psalms than there are in any other book in the Bible. There are 150 Psalms in the Bible. 150. Now, of those, they think that David wrote close to 70 of them. In other words, he wrote almost half of the Psalms that we have in the book of Psalms. And one of the most famous is Psalm 23. Now maybe you've heard it. So, those of you who have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 23. I kind of find this for my sister. Find it for your sister. Is it 22 to 24? Yeah, the page will be 22 to 24, but when you get to that page, look down here. And where it says Psalm 23, that's where you're at. Did you find it? It might just be a big number 23. There you go. Perfect. Now, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to read. And let me find Psalm 23 first. Those of you who... Well, first of all, those of you with Bibles, raise your hand if you want to read. Okay, those of you with Bibles, raise your hand if you want to read. You don't have to if you don't want to. Now, you can put them down. I got two. Those of you who do not have Bibles, raise your hand if you'd like to read. Because I've got, I'll give you my Bible. And she's got a, she's got a Bible. 
She's got a Bible on her phone. I got a Bible on my phone. So if you want to read, hands up right now. Nobody else? All right. Who wants to read? Yeah, I know you want to read. You already told me. You probably did. If those, those of you who are in Christian schools, you want to read? Umberto, did I see your hand up? Did you, did you want to read? Okay, that's fine. You got it? Anybody else want to read? All right, what I'm going to do is we're going to start right up here with Anaya. And Anaya, just read verse 1. Just read the first verse. Is? The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. Okay, good. Very good. Um, Matthias, go ahead and read verse 2, please. Pastures, okay. You need me beside still waters. Okay. And uh, Hadassah, go ahead and read verse 3. He restored my soul and his kingdom. All right. Um, one more. There's one more uh, line there. Leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. For his name's sake. Good. And let me. Finish writing down who's good. And then I, uh, who else has a Bible? Xander, you no, you don't. Yes, he does. He has. Oh, does he? Xander, you want to read verse four, real loud. You can you can pull your mask off if you because it'll help you speak clearer. Real loud. Yay. Go ahead and help him out there. Good job. Excellent job. Did you bring a Bible this morning? Nope. Okay. We're reading out of the 23rd Psalm. Would you like to read a verse? You don't have to if you don't want to. So if you don't want to, just say no. All right. So we've read verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to... Oh, Kaya, go ahead. Didn't realize you hadn't. Read verse 5, please. All right, good. And is there anybody else? Uh, you already read. And you already read. Okay. read verse 6 then if nobody else wants to read it says surely who said I want to read well so does Matthias but surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord who has their Bible what's that last word forever 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 how long is that forever 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 in other words, yeah, it never ends, right? Oops. A second here. 
It never ends. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Forever. You know how long forever is? Forever. Never ending. When my dad, my dad was a preacher. Okay? My dad, my dad was a preacher. And when my dad said grace, you know what it means to say grace? Yeah. You know, you know what it means to say grace? Do you, do you pray before you eat? Yeah. Do you yeah. pray before you eat? Yeah. yeah. Why do we why do we do that? Because. Because? Because why? So we can pray. We all can pray with Jesus. That's right. Why what are we doing when we pray? We're saying what? Say thank you. Right. What do we say before we eat though? We say thank you. We say thank you. That's why we say grace. We say thank you to God for the food that we're going to eat. And God, God is pleased when we're thankful. God's pleased with people who are saying, thank you, God. Now, I'm going to collect up my phone here before you start taking selfies on it. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I believe that. All right. But anyway, when my dad would say grace, he was never going to stop. He would pray. And he would keep praying. And he'd keep praying. And he'd keep praying. And pretty soon we'd start thinking, Dad, our food's going to get cold. That is what forever seems like. Okay? Forever. When somebody is standing in your way, you need to get somewhere, and they won't move. And they just sit there and take their own sweet time. And you just want to take them and move. Let me get by you, please. That's what forever seems like. You know what, though? It's not. Forever means it never ends. Forever is like when you're in school. And it's the end of the day. And you just want the teacher to dismiss you. So you can go play. Yeah. And the teacher keeps no, going on and, and on and on and on and on and they'll never shut up. <laughs> That's what forever feels like. It does feel like that. It does, doesn't it? Yes. But here's the thing. Maybe you are playing your favorite game and you never have to stop ever. You never have to stop to go to bed. You never have to stop to eat. You never have to stop to, dare I say, go to the bathroom. <laughs> Not if you're enjoying what you're doing. Not if you're enjoying it, right? You just keep going and you keep going and you keep going. And that's how it's going to be with heaven. You're not going to take any selfies for Miss Faith, are you? No. <laughs> Thank you. I wish. And here's the thing. When we get to heaven, it's going to be everything that you ever wanted. You get to see Jesus. How can I, how can I think? It's like on Christmas Day, when you're opening presents, and every present is for you. And you get done opening a present, and there's another one for you, and it keeps going. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be cool? That's not wasting my time at all. When we get to heaven, when we get to heaven and we see Jesus, it's going to be like Christmas all the time. It's the best gift that we ever had. And that's what that's what David was writing here. And I get to live with God forever. It's a treat that never ends. It's a it's 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 a it's an ice cream sundae that never stops and never gets you sick and never fills you up. Never gets you burned. Okay. Never you never get brain freeze. Alright. But well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
it starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. I now some some versions of the Bible say I shall not want. Others say I have everything I need. Others just say I lack. Nothing. <laughs> what, what is a shepherd? What's a shepherd? A dog. A dog. Like a kind of. Kind of. What's a shepherd? A person that takes care of lots of animals. Person who takes care of animals. Now, dogs do that too. You're thinking a German shepherd. That's yeah. what you're thinking. What's, what's a shepherd? It's a person that. Sheep. sheep, exactly. Now let me let me tell you something about sheep. Okay, I don't want to be. I don't want to say this is you, but God tells us we should be like sheep, because sheep do what they're told. Okay, here's the truth about sheep. Sheep are kind of dumb. Oh, now, God is not saying, I want you all to be dumb. That's not what God is saying. But, and it's not really that sheep are, are dumb and they're not smart. But sheep, don't, they don't take chances. They don't go off and, they're not adventurous. They don't go off and do things without being told. A sheep will recognize a leader and will follow that leader. Buddy, you're going to fall right off of that chair. A sheep will follow a leader wherever that leader goes. Now, usually the leader is a person. Sometimes people use dogs to help round up the sheep because sometimes the sheep go astray. They start, they wander off, and they yeah they, they need to they need to round them up and, and keep them from wandering off. They do that with cows. They do that with cows too, but. But sheep are especially because sheep just look, I'm a sheep, and they just go wander wherever they want to go. And it need, you need people to kind of corral them and hey, come on, come on, come on, let's, let's go this way, let's go this way. And so sometimes they use dogs to do that because dogs are, they'll go everywhere. Dog, dogs are. Yeah, they, they just run super fast. And people, and they're a lot cheaper than people. You know, it takes much less to, to feed a dog than it does to feed a person. All right, so. But the Lord is our shepherd. We are kind of like sheep. Really. We tend to wander off. You tend to wander off, don't you? You tend to wander off, don't you? I do. Every one of us does. We tend to wander off. But here's another thing, though. When a sheep is with the shepherd, that sheep is safe. Because nothing bad is going to happen to the sheep as long as that sheep is with the shepherd. You see, their sheep have enemies. Who knows who the enemies of sheep are? Wolves. 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 Any others? Animals. Animals. Anything that eats meat. Lions. 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 And, and bears. Oh my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. David was a shepherd when he was young. If you remember when David, before he faced off with Goliath, David was a shepherd. When, when it came time for Samuel to anoint the next king, his dad forgot about him because he was out with the sheep. But David once told, when he, was in, when he was in front of Saul, and Saul was getting ready to send him out to Goliath, and he said, well, you know, you're kind of, you're a young guy, you know, you're, you're kind of scrawny. Goliath, this huge, 
Colossus. Do you remember when we went out to the basketball court? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. And that we stretched out, I think Xander, you helped me on that one. I stretched out that line, and you know how tall the basket is? That's almost how tall Goliath was. So David's this kid, probably shorter than I am, and Goliath's this huge colossus that his head would be sticking through our ceiling. That's all. He's huge. It was nine feet, nine inches tall. That, this ceiling is only eight feet. He's a foot and nine inches. His head would be sticking through this roof. He would have big down. We were driving a monster truck. He would be only three inches shorter than a basketball hoop. That's tall. And so so Saul was thinking, hey, you know, you, maybe you, maybe you're Maybe you're a little too small to be going up against this giant. And David said, look, when I was a shepherd, when I was a shepherd, a bear came out of the woods and started to grab some of my sheep. And what did he do? Yeah, he killed the bear. He went and fought against the bear and killed it. He was not afraid to do that. When a lion came out of the came out of the woods and tried to grab some of his sheep. He went all, He went to that lion, probably using the same sling that he used for Goliath, and he took care of that lion. You see, a shepherd will protect sheep. A shepherd will risk his life if he needs to, to protect sheep. And so God will protect us at all times. And as long as a shepherd is with the sheep, a shepherd is going to make sure that the sheep have everything that they need. That they have safety, that they have a place to sleep, that they have plenty of food and water. And that's, that's what the second line said. It said that he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the quiet streams. Did you know that a sheep will not drink from running water? If you go to a stream and the water's just running down the stream, you've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen it in a stream, haven't you? A sheep will not drink from that water. Why? Because they're afraid of the moving water. You need to lead a sheep to a pool of water where the water is still. It's not moving. And then the sheep will go and the sheep will drink from that water. God is going to protect us. There, there are things that go by us that scare us. You ever been scared? You ever been scared of something? Mm, kind of, because my cousin scares me all the time. Cousins? Okay, but there are, there are situations. Big dogs. You're, you're big dogs. Anybody ever uh, encounter a bully in school? Yep. Mm, no. This may be hard for you to believe. But when I was a kid, I was scrawny. I was this skinny little kid. When I was in fifth grade, when I was in fifth grade, how much do you weigh? Seventy-two pounds. I was a little smaller than you. Whoa. When I was in fifth grade, I was about sixty pounds. I was skinny, and I was short. And guess what made me? Guess what that made me? That made me a magnet for every bully in school. Oh, look, little Dave. And guess what? Dave's got glasses, too. I had these little horn-rimmed glasses. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, no. the ones that say nerd. I liked them because they said nerd, because I was a nerd. I was. Kind of hard to believe, but I was. And so, here's the thing though. God will protect you at all times. There are things that scare you. There are things that, and you get into situations. God is with you at all times. He's there to protect you just like a shepherd protects 
sheep. God will protect you. In fact, it says here, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Can I tell you, can I tell you something that happened to me? It was not very far from here. I was trying to help somebody out when I didn't realize that this guy was into some bad stuff. And I'm not gonna go into details. All I can say is that I walked into a room with a bunch of gang members. I was scared. I knew that they could have killed me at any time. Any time they wanted to, they could have killed me. But I also knew that as scared as I was, God was with me. God was with me. I didn't have to be afraid of them because God was with me. And I did what I needed to do. Inside, I was scared to death. But outside, I remained calm because I knew that God was with me. When I walked out of that room, and as you can tell, I walked out alive, I was shaking all over the place. I was scared. But God was with me. See, even though you might face a situation where you thought you were going to die, and I honestly thought I was going to die that day, God is still with you. What's the worst thing that could have happened to me? They could have killed me, right. They could have shot me right there. Guess what would happen after that? I'm in heaven. I am walking with God. You see, the worst thing a person can do is kill you. And if that happens, you're with God forever. You win. You win. You cannot lose when God is with you. You see, the Bible talks about that the enemy can only steal your body. He can only steal your life, your body. But afterward, you will live forever with Jesus. That, that's what he means when he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And it says, your rod and your staff cover me. In other words, the shepherd's rod and his staff they would use to guide the sheep. To make sure that they're going the right way. God is going to make sure that you go the right way. And you might, when you get older, you might start to wander off. And there's always going to be that presence of God in your heart that says, here's the right way. Walk this way. Walk this way. And listen, if we do obey, he says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. You know what whooping is? You don't. You don't. It means to whoop somebody. Who plays basketball here? You play basketball. You ever dunk? You ever dunk over somebody? Or maybe maybe they come and contest a shot, and you just drain it. And what's the first thing you do? Celebrate. I'm in your face. I, ce I celebrate in your face. That's what's called woofing. Okay? When you celebrate in somebody's face, that's what's called woofing. It says that God will prepare a table for you, a feast for you, in the presence of your enemies. In other words, the people that want to do bad things to you, God will make sure that you are blessed in front of them so that they can look at you and envy you. Because God is with you. All right, last thing here. It says here, Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, we already went over that. Forever. How long is forever? Forever, forever never ends. Continue. 
Listen. Listen. Stay with God. Obey Him. Walk in all His ways. If you do, God will go with you. He will prosper you. He will make sure that you turn out good. He'll protect you wherever you go. You'll need to, never need to be afraid of anybody. You know, it's funny. Like I told you how I was such a little kid. It always seemed like the biggest bullies, some of them wanted to pick on me. Others of them wanted to be my friend. Seriously. We had this one kid in, in my fifth grade class. His name was J.D. Hetty. He was a big old kid. Now he's this little scrawny kid. But J.D. liked me. He sat right next to me because his name, his last name, H-E-A-D-Y, my last name, H-E-T-T-E-S-H-E-I-M-E-R, so our names were right next to each other, and they seated us alphabetically, so he sat right next to me. He liked me. I don't know why he liked me, but he did. Maybe it's because I was no threat to him, but he liked me. You know what? Nobody ever bothered me when J.D. was with me. He was a big kid. Then I found out one day when the report cards came out what J.D. meant, and he had this real feminine name. Jewel, J-E-W-E-L. And at the <coughs> Jewel, he said, if you ever tell anybody what my name is, I will hurt you. Oh, you just told everyone. Oh, no, no, no. You would never there's, there's tell the thing. No, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Because he'd been a friend to me. He'd been a friend to me. Hey, look, I got the biggest kid in class that's my friend. And I'm not going to breathe that name out to anybody. Seriously, I, I never told anybody what that name was until now. What was his nickname? JD was his nickname. Because his first name started with J and his middle name started with a D. So we all called him JD. All right, listen. Walk with God. How do you walk with God? Obey Him. Obey God. Obey God. Obey God. Obey God. Obey God. God, follow him wherever you go, and you'll always be safe. And you'll always end up smell like a rose. In other words, good things will happen to you when God is leading you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are with us. Just like a shepherd protects his sheep, you protect us. Just like a shepherd guides his sheep in the way that they ought to go, you guide us. Lord, may we always follow you all the days of our lives. May we always be obedient to you. And even when we stray, may we hear your voice calling to us, saying, come back. And may we always obey that voice of yours. Now, Father, as we go our separate ways, I pray your blessing be upon us, that you would keep us, and that you would bring us again into your house rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.